Alright, welcome back everyone. So in today's tutorial, we're going to model a spiral staircase in a helical style. Let me show you what that looks like. So I have some images of helical stairs or staircases. And um, you can see that it looks a little bit different than the, the regular spiral staircase in that it's missing a central column. And some of them do have one, but it's usually not dependent on it for structural purposes. Um, let's take a look at some of these images. Um, some of the other features of it are that it can look a little bit like a sculpture or an art piece. Um, it's a little bit larger generally and often can support more than one person or several people walking up and down. Um, they can get quite large, so this one's from a medical institute I read. And um, these two I really like. Some of them have an exposed bottom section for the steps and some of them have a closed one. Uh, we'll be making the closed one, but I'll explain how you can create this one as well. And I really like um, the bottom section of this one, how it curves out. So we'll try and recreate that one as well. But yeah, let's get started. I'll put these images away. All right, let's begin. Um, add a plane into your scene and then open up your channel box. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees in the X axis. There you go. And then press F to frame in on it. And what we're going to do is we're going to press T to bring back our polyplane window. And I'm going to lower the subdivisions to one for now. And we want to create the dimension for our step. So the average step dimension will be 10 inches across the top, which is called the run, and seven and a half going upwards, which is called the rise. I want to give it a little more runway. So I'm going to make it 12 and seven. There we go. And then what I want to do next is give it some divisions. So in the past, we would give it um, the amount of steps for each division, right? So eight divisions would represent uh, the steps, but I would like a little nicer of a curvature. So instead of using one face per step, I'm actually going to do four faces per step. Also, rather than create the total number of steps we need, what I would like to do also is um, just create a few and then we'll duplicate the mesh. So let's set this to 16. There we go. And let's go into the front panel. So tap your spacebar, hover over the front panel, tap the spacebar again. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the color of some of these faces so we can visualize our steps better. So I'm going to go into face mode and I'm going to do a box select of these faces over here. And what I want are three steps in total. So that'll be um, four. This would be one step, right? So we want two more steps and then I'm going to stair step my way up. So I'm going to grab these ones, adding these to the selection. And then I'm going to grab these ones as well. Right. And now let's give it a different color. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, choose assign new material, and I'm just going to give it another Lambert. And then we want to find Lambert 2. I'm just going to make this a little bit, little bit darker for now. There we go. And now we want to cut out the section that will be the staircase. So let's go into object mode and we need the multi-cut tool. You can get to it from up here or the modeling toolkit. But what I'll do is I'll use the marking menu. So I'm going to hold down shift and the right mouse button, which brings up the marking menu, and you can get to insert edges from here, extrude, and some other ones. I'm gonna choose multi-cut. And then for the staircase, I wanna start from right here, and I wanna cut all the way up to here. There we go, then press enter. And for the top, I'm gonna to cut it from here, because this is where the railing will start, and I wanna cut it all the way up to here. There we go. And now let's press Q to go to our select tool. We'll go into face mode. So hold down the right mouse button to go open your component modes, choose face. And then I'm going to start getting rid of some of these faces. So I'll select these ones. I'll press delete. I know I need to get rid of everything here and everything here. Then I'll hold down the tab key. That'll enable drag select. And I'm going to get rid of these ones. And there we go, and then I'll press delete. All right, so now let's go back into um, our perspective panel. So tap your spacebar. And then what we want to do is we want to extrude out um, this mesh to make the wall section. So uh, this is part of the steps, but it's also part of the wall. So if we take a look at our reference, right? This one here, right? We can see that's like that. So that's fine for us. Um, oops, what did I do? I just need to move it over here. All right, and then now let's extrude this. So I'm gonna hold down Shift and the right mouse button to extrude. 
you can also extrude from here as well. And then we just want to give this a bit of thickness. So um, I'm going to make it like 0.5 for now. We can adjust it later. And then we want to select our steps. So if you want the bottom of your steps exposed, like I mentioned earlier when I showed you the references, you would just um, select these steps here, right? And then these ones, and maybe up to here, but you would want to avoid um, selecting those ones. Um, what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna select all those ones because I want to have a closed bottom section. So let's uh, hold down the tab key. I'm gonna do a drag select and get drag and gr grab all these faces. And then I want to grab these ones as well. And there we go. And I have to be careful not to select any faces I don't want. So I'll press four on the keyboard just to see the wireframe and I'll press five to go back. All right, so now let's extrude out our steps. So hold down shift and the right mouse button, extrude. And we just want to drag this out a little bit. And then while those faces are still selected, I'm gonna press delete to get rid of those. There we go. And now let's mirror this mesh. So go into object mode, go into your move tool, and then you can see that um, the pivot is on this side. I wanna move it to this side. So I'm gonna hold down D, then V, click and drag and move this over, let go. And now we want to just make sure that our transforms are frozen. So let's freeze those transformations. And we wanna know where we're oriented. So my Z arrow, which is the blue arrow, is pointing in this direction, which means it's this side is the positive direction. So we need to mirror in the positive Z direction. And we also need to mirror in object space for this mesh. So let's uh, click the mirror button, which is up here, or you can use the marking menu. There we go, mirror. And what I want to do is change this. So we'll change it to object mode. We'll change it to Z for the axis. And we want to change it to positive. And you may need to play with your merge threshold, but for me, it worked out fine. All right, so I have a edge here in the middle. So let's go into edge mode and let's get rid of it. So double click that edge, hold down control and press delete to get rid of those vertices as well. And then what we want to do is we want to separate this mesh into three parts, a front, a middle, and a back, and we'll duplicate that middle section. So let's go into um, the front panel and go into face mode. And we do what, what we want to do is do a box select of the faces here, right? Now let's go back to our perspective panel and we want to make sure that we have all the steps. So we need to add this part of the mesh as well. So basically I'll press four, so if you can see it a little bit better. And then let's um, extract those faces. So to do that, use their, your mark menu. So hold down shift and the right mouse button. And down here, there's something called extract faces. So choose that. I'll open up the outliner and now we have this mesh and this one. This one we need to separate. So let's open up the modeling toolkit and separate it. So now that is also separated into two meshes. All right, so with the back mesh selected, let's move it out of the way. And then what we wanna do is we want to, um, let me just close the modeling toolkit, give us a bit more space. We want to select this mesh and move this pivot to this corner again. To do that, hold down D then V, click and drag and move it over here, let go. And now we want to duplicate it and snap it to here. So uh, press control D to duplicate it. So now we have a new mesh and then hold down V on the keyboard, click and drag that over here. And now it's snapped to there and we can duplicate it with transform by holding down shift and pressing D. And you can keep doing that, it'll go all the way up and what we want are about you know 30 steps. 30 is gonna give us a nice spiral. Um, if you want a longer spiral, you'll want more steps. Um, but I, I want about 30. You can go like probably 20 is the minimum, right? But I'm gonna hold down shift and keep pressing D till I have roughly 30. So I'm gonna go up to about, probably right here is good. That's two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. Yeah, that's probably fine. And now what I'll do is I'm going to select this mesh, move this over here, and we'll move this pivot to this corner as well. So move it over here and then we'll snap it to here. Next, what we want to do is combine this into one object again. So I'm going to box select everything. We'll click that combine button, right? And might as well get rid of that history. And then 
What we want to do next is maybe give it the Lambert 1 material again so we can see it a bit better. So I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, choose Assign Existing Material, and I'm going to choose Lambert 1. And then if you take a look, you'll notice that I actually have some dark edges here. And what I have are Highlight Border Edges Enabled. If you want that, go to Windows, uh, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, and then down here uh, under Display and Polygons, you can turn on highlight border edges. And why, why that's convenient is that it shows where your edges are detached because we need to re-weld these vertices. So um, I'm going to turn on poly count so you can see. It's under display, heads up display, poly count. And I'm going to select the mesh and go to vertex, right? And if I box select this vertex, right? So I just have that one vert selected. Um, you'll notice that I have two verts here, right? Where normally there would be one. So we need to re-weld those. So let's box select all these vertices. You can see I have um, about 2354, right? So now what I can do is hold down Shift and the right mouse button, and I can go to Merge Vertices and Merge Vertices. Let go, and now we have a lot less. There's also a button up here, right? Now, um, what we want to do is we will probably want to, um, let's see here. We're going to actually extrude up the walls. So let's do that next. I'm going to select this face over here. And then I'm going to hold down Shift and double click this one because that's where the left wall will be. And I'm going to actually extrude them separately because on this side, we'll eventually put a glass panel. All right. So let's extrude that. And then um, what we'll do is you'll notice that my arrow is pointing in this direction. I want to switch to, to world space. So I'll click this little widget and then I'll move this up. And depending on how high your wall is, you wa may want an extra division, right? Um, but what I'll do is I'll go up to about right here for now. And let's go into the side view so we can see it a bit better as well. There we go. And in the side view, um, where is that? I probably lost the transform tool. So what I'll do is, oh, I can see it in here, but not the side view. So I'll just change in here. And I'll go up to about right here. All right. So there we go. And then um, what I want to do next is I want to extrude out this side as well. So let's go into face mode. We'll select this face. Hold down uh, shift. Double click this one. And we'll extrude this one up. But I won't, don't want to extrude up as far. So let's extrude. Where's that widget? There we go. And then we'll move this up just a little bit to about right here is fine. And now with those faces still selected, what I would like to do is offset it. And then we'll inset it into this part of the mesh. So um, let's extrude again. So we just extruded. We can press G to repeat. And then we can change the offset. However, this slider can go pretty fast. So I'll hold down control and shift so that it doesn't um, move as fast. And I want to create the section that will be the glass panel. So I think that is probably fine for my glass panel. So I'll go with probably something like that. All right. And now um, what I want to do is I want to inset it. So let's press G to repeat again. Click our little widget. And then what we want to do is push that in. And then with those faces still selected, let's actually create the glass panel. So we're going to duplicate those faces. So hold down Shift and the right mouse button. And down here, we have something called Duplicate Face. And if we open up our outliner, we have our stair mesh and we have the other one. And with the other one selected, we're going to extrude that up. So extrude, click your little widget, and we want to bring it up to about right here. I want to bring it um, a little bit lower than the other one. So I'll go into the front panel over here and I'll just turn on wireframe unshaded so I can see this a little bit better. I'll bring it down to about right here. All right. And now let's check our steps and see if it feels right. So um, I feel like my steps could be a bit wider, right? So I'll go into object mode, select the mesh. And what we'll do is we'll move um, half of it over. So, and by half, I mean just this side. So let's go into vertex selection. 
we'll grab all the vertices here and then we just want to move it over here a little bit at least for me right you might be happy with yours and then i'll go with um maybe a touch wider i'll go with something like that all right so now um we have this set and we're ready for the next phase <laughs> which is um we're going to bend this so before we um bend it i just want to mention um now with this glass panel and any other details we're about to um deform our mesh so it'll warp the features which is fine for the staircase but if you're planning to add any extra um details to it for example railings um any other like you know like um, small pieces of mesh right you'll probably want to do it after because it'll warp it all right now let's give our glass a new material as well as the staircase so I'm going to select the glass, hold down the right mouse button, assign new material, and I'll just give it a blin. And this blin we'll call it, um, just need the mouse wheel down here, and we'll call it glass. Glass underscore mat for material. And then we'll select the other one, and we'll also give it a new material, assign new material, and this one we'll give it a blin as well. And we'll call this one stairs underscore mat. There we go. Um, and we'll leave the color alone for now, but um, that's so that we can change it later. And now what I would like to do is I would like to deform this. So let's select it. We'll make it one object, right? Combine into one object. And we'll also maybe get rid of all this history. So delete history. And now we want to give this a bend deformer. So that'll be under deform, nonlinear, and bend. And with the bend deformer, we want to rotate it. So go into your rotate tool and we want to rotate it in this direction. So 90 degrees in the Z axis for me. And then um, what we can do is we can quickly check which way this is bending by pressing T to bring up this manipulator. And then we can click this middle uh, blue ball and click and drag. And you can see it's bending this direction. So we need to rotate it in this direction as well. So go into your rotate tool and we'll bring it over here. We want to rotate it 90 in the uh, Y for me. All right, now we can open up our attribute editor and we can um, maybe curve this. So I want to curve it in this direction because this is where the um, railing will be and this side is the glass, but you can curve it in either direction. And what I'm going to do is make this 180. All right, and the next thing we would like to do is we want to actually check the shading on this, right? So I'm going to turn off wireframe unshaded and we just want to inspect this. And you can see that some of these edges, right, are still hard, right? And so what we want to do is just soften some of those edges. So let's select it, go into edge mode, and then to uh, select a lot of the edges at once, what we can do is um, select these edges over here where we know they need to be uh, softened, right? And I'll actually go up, you know, along the glass as well, up to here, and then I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and choose select similar and Maya is going to try and detect those similar edges and it's done actually a pretty good job right it's gone all the way down here it's missed a couple but we can just add those to the selection and we can grab this one and this one as well so that one and then at the top here I think there was also another one that it missed so I'll grab these ones as well all right I don't need to soften this edge here I'll leave it but I'll grab these ones and this one. All right, so now what we'll do is we'll hold down shift and the right mouse button, go to soften harden, and then soften edge. And now if we take a look, we have a much nicer and smooth curvature. So I think that was everything, so let's take a look. So now you can see that um, using that blend material, we were able to de detect those hard edges, right? And now it's looking a lot better. So any edges that you find that are hard, you'll probably want to soften those. And then now what we can do is just um, go through this um, bend deformer tool a little, a little bit. So um, just turn on wireframe and shader so we can see a little bit better. So with the bend deformer tool selected, right, you have the option to change the curvature. And so I'll make it 180 for now. And then you can 
if you want to save that state, right? Instead of deleting the ben, sorry, deleting the history, which gets rid of the Ben deformer, you can just make a duplicate of this, right? And that allows you to, you know, test out some different shapes to see which spiral forms you like, right? And you can go back to here and then make some adjustments. Also, I recommend saving a mesh before you even add the Ben deformer because it allows you to go back and um, maybe do some more modeling. So over here, maybe I'll, you know, um, play with the bounds a little bit. So I'll go into the bend deformer and I can play with the high and the low bound to just where I want to have that curve, right? Um, also, what you can do is, so say I grab this, I find sometimes it's easier to adjust the, bound, the bounds from here. So I'll press T and it allows me to control this a little bit better, right? And then with the move tool, sorry, the, the bend handle, you can move it here as well, right? So it's pretty cool. And maybe you can increase this here and have it bend here. And depending how tight you want the, um, basically the middle section, you can move it in and out this way as well. So for example, if I made this 180 and I made this one again, and if we go into the top view, we can see that um, the radius is pretty large, right? So we can make that smaller if we want by moving this in or out, right? And so if I like that, I can select it, Control D to make a duplicate, and just move it over here and keep it if I want, right? And then, so depending on how you want your um, spiral, you can also, you know, let's grab that bend deformer, bend handle. We can over bend that so we can make it maybe 360. We have a pretty decent amount of, of um, divisions that we can try this, but if you have too few divisions, it might look a little bit funny, right? So here you can see that this is starting to look quite spirally. Pretty cool. It's a little bit much for me, but I think it looks pretty nice, right? Actually, it doesn't look too bad. So I'll control D to make a duplicate of that and move it here, right? So yeah, play around with that. And also um, you can scale this as well. So once you make a duplicate, right? I recommend playing with the scale, so maybe I'll scale into the Y, and sometimes it looks pretty nice just to change that up a little bit, right? So maybe I'll save a copy like this, move this one over here, and then scale this down and test this one. And then you can take it into your game environment or whatever project you have and um, see if you like it, right? And then uh, now I wanna make a couple other things for this, right? The reason I didn't make it earlier I mentioned is because I didn't want it warping, but let's just say I like this staircase and I wanna make a railing for it, right? Um, actually, let me, let me scale this down a little bit, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select this. Let's, um, I'm just gonna hide these other ones and I'll hide this one as well. And I'm going to work with this one. So let's just say I like this and I wanna make a trim for this glass panel. So what we can do is first, let's separate the mesh again. So we'll go to the modeling toolkit, we'll click separate. So now we have this and this. And what I'll do is I'm going to hide this part of the mesh. So I'm pressing H to hide it. And with the glass panels selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert um, an edge loop right in the middle there. So let's grab our multi-cut tool. I'm gonna middle mouse click right here. There we go. And then I'm gonna go into edge mode. So I'm gonna select this edge, make my way to the top, and I'll double click this one so that I have just um, those ones selected, right? Just at the top there. And then what I wanna do is I wanna add this edge on the side and this edge, edge on the side as well. There we go. And then what we can do is now we can cur convert that edge to a curve. So go to uh, modify, convert, and then we wanna go to polygon edges to curve. I'm gonna open up that option box. Just gonna reset this. And I'm gonna change it from three cubic to linear and click convert. So now we have a curve. And why that's useful is that if you are if you want, you can extrude some geometry along that. And if you're in Maya 2022, you can just, just click this sweep mesh and we can uh, sweep it along there. So what I'm going to do is just lower the scale profile to maybe 0.15. And now I have a nice trim for this. Right, so you can also down here change the divisions. You know, do some different things here. Um, I'm not going to go through the the sweep uh, features, right? But 
you'll probably want to play with um, the precision if you if it's not precise enough for you. So increase that. Um, but I'll leave it alone. And um, if you have too many divisions on one side, you can click optimize as well. And depending on your curve, you may want to change these options. So now we have this. I'm just going to give this a new material. And I'm going to assign, actually, let me just check this. I might make this actually a little bit thinner. So um, under sweep, uh, sweep mesh creator, I'm just going to make this maybe 0.13. Yeah, it looks a little better. And then now what I'll do is I'll select it and I can delete that history, right? I can get rid of the curve now. And then what I'll do with this is I'll give it a new material. So assign new material and we'll call this, um, we'll make it a blend as well. And I'm just gonna rename this um, glass trim. There we go. And now let's uh, unhide our mesh and take a look. And now we have a nice glass trim for this. We can even give the glass a new material. So, sorry, a new color. So to go to the material properties, we can hold down the right mouse button, choose material attributes, and hopefully it brings us up. Sometimes you have to do it a couple times. And I'll just go and make this like a blue, like that. Maybe give it a little bit of transparency for now. All right, so now it's st starting to look pretty cool. And then one other thing I'd recommend is just I'm separating some of these glass panels to give it a little more realism. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the glass panel. I'm going to isolate it for a second. And then over here, I'm going to separate some of these sections. So let's start from maybe start from the bottom. And over here, what we can do is um, we can go and I'm going to choose maybe this edge over here. So we'll do one, you know, we'll do maybe like one, two, three, four, five maybe six, so we'll maybe we'll start on this edge. And I'm gonna double click that edge, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bevel it. So let's just check these divisions and see if we have a good amount. So every six, I'm gonna grab, um, but let's just start from here. So I'm just gonna bevel this edge, um, bevel. I'm gonna reduce the fraction to something pretty small. So for me, let's go with, uh, I'm gonna go with a fraction of about 0.01. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into face mode, grab that loop, right? And then I'm going to delete it. And then I want to just bridge those edges. So I'm going to go into edge mode, double click this edge, and then I'm going to basically bridge it. I'm using that marking menu, by the way, and double click this one and G to repeat. So now that's uh, filled up. And now that little separation will make the glass pretty nice. And what I recommend is adding a little bit of connector there, and it really adds some details to this mesh. So the connector I'll use is a cylinder, just because um, I find the cylinder looks pretty nice. So we'll move it over here. A fast way to do it is just to basically snap it to there, vertex snap, and then we'll rotate this. So we'll rotate it 90 degrees. So let's open up this. So rotate 90 degrees here. And then we'll go into the top view. So in here, I have it isolated, the uh, glass and the, so we'll select these two, go into this panel, and we'll just isolate it so we can see a bit better. And then with this, what I'll do is I'll scale this down and we'll rotate it to fit in here. All right, so move right here and let's take a look. So now we have this piece here that is helping to connect our glass, right? And I can duplicate this, put another one right here, and then make my way up and fill up that mesh and it'll actually look pretty good. Yeah, so I finished adding those details to the glass panel, created more areas of separation, as well as um, added more connecting pieces. I reduced the topology on the cylinder a little bit, as well as removed the top edge that was sitting on the glass panel that we used to create the curve and that trim along the panel. So this is what it looks like, and you'll be able to see the render in the thumbnail for this video if you haven't already. Um, yeah, so let's wrap up this tutorial. In the next one, we'll create a spiral staircase with a center column, and we'll do it using MASH. So that should be a lot of fun. We'll see you all then.